I doubt we're going to find one who's got a more compelling and, and curious science project as far as insect research goes than, the, than Dr. Arnold. So welcome, on my, my friend. Thanks for joining us on the beer line. Thank you for inviting. It's uh, an uh, interesting experience. <laughs> yeah, it, it is for everybody, you know. And, and hey, anybody who sets up an entire day to talk about honeybees, you know there's going to be something interesting. Now, we, we just had a, another guest on who talked a little bit about the situation with colonies, uh, with honeybees and colony collapse there. But you have kind of the opposite end of science research. You did something, uh, I'll just come out and say it, something with windshields, isn't that right? Uh, that's absolutely correct. Um, <laughs> Uh, and especially license plates, so to say. Uh, license plates, there you go. <laughs> why, don't you, um, why don't you tell us about what you learned from studying bugs smashed up on windshields and license plates? Yeah, we recently, that's the 23rd of May this year, we launched a, a new citizen science project uh, called Splash Teller in Dutch. That's about splat counter in, uh, in English, I think. Splat and, counter. <laughs> splat, yeah. And, and we asked people to record the number of um, insects, unfortunately dead, on their license plate after uh, a drive. Um, so before they, uh, they, uh, they start driving, they have to clean their license plate. And you can imagine that that is quite a challenge for people to do, to sit in front of their neighbors often <laughs> sit and, clean their license plate. <laughs> and clean their license plate, uh, write down their mileage. Um, and start driving to where they have to go. And when they arrive, uh, write down their mileage again so they can determine the amount of kilometers or miles and then uh, count the number of insects on their license plate. <laughs> that's simple as that. And S you might simple wonder, as that. Who, who does the actual scraping of the bugs? That's what I want to know. Do they do it as citizen scientists or do you do it as a research professor? Um, we do it ourselves with my colleagues, uh, of course. Um, okay. But we have uh, a few hundred of people uh, involved in the last uh, one and a half months, and they all together traveled uh, 30,000 kilometers. Um, so that's a very good, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, a really good example. Exactly. Now, Dr. Arnold, I, I know that you're one of the leading experts on crowdsourcing and citizen, citizen science across the, the world. And before we talk about your phonology work, I just wanted to point something out to our viewers. Again, when we talk about cultural entomology, all the ways that insects influence and impact the human society, part of Dr. Arnold's research is really borderline on insects, insect forensics. And, and, and I don't know if you know this, Doctor, but uh, just recently here in the past year in the United States, there was a major legal case, a, a murder mystery actually, that involved a very similar uh, study of windshields. Uh, a, a person who had done something inappropriate to some of their family members traveled across country and they were arrested, and in court, they studied the windshields, they studied the bugs, and they determined the, 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 the flight path that this person took. So I hope that doesn't come up in your case. I think it's a little bit more, a little more humane study than something like that. But um, you, you know, yourgardenshow.com citizen science has a, a, a the platform can be used for just about any social media application of citizen science and uh, phonology is one of our next major platforms. You started a project in, in the Netherlands that has all to do with the cycles of nature, isn't that right? That's correct, but maybe I can add something about that uh, license plate uh, exercise. Oh, yeah, yeah, please do, please do. Now, the main reason why we do that, and I didn't tell you about that, is that we want to have an idea of the insect density throughout the country and throughout time. Um, because that is, of course, of importance for uh, yeah, the birds, the bats, who eat these insects. And we absolutely do not know uh, the density at the moment. Um, and we talk about uh, pollinator decline, maybe, mainly bees, because we can easily measure that. But for all those other insects, many thousands and thousands of species, we hardly, do an, don't, uh, we hardly uh, can make a good estimate how that changes in time. So, by recording that on license plate, you can get a good idea, is our idea, of how the densities are changing over time and how weather influences might influence the uh, density. Now you and have a social, social website. You have a special website set up for phonology, isn't that right? That's correct. We started with our phonological network in the Netherlands in 2001, together with a national radio program. Uh, we have about 8,000 people involved and several hundreds of school children in, in context of the GLOBE program uh, set up by Al Gore uh, uh, many years ago. Um, 
<coughs> but we continue our observations or the observations that were already started in 1868. <coughs> so, ah. sorry. so that's already quite a long time ago. And what we see is that um, the length of the growing season in our country, where we have a, a, a seen a significant increase in temperature, that the, the length of the growing season is already one month longer than it was 25 years ago. I see. Very, so very clear a, indication of some, some degree of climate change. And, and specifically for the talk about pollinators, could you very briefly address uh, what's going on with the uh, bumblebee, native bee, the honeybee, whatever population uh, as a result of your phenology work? Um, we not specifically look at uh, uh, phenology of bees, but we had a long-term study since the 1950s of fruit uh, flowering data, apples and pears, many varieties at several fruit research stations. And during the 50s till the 70s, they also recorded optimal flying days for, uh, or the days when they saw many uh, bees flying. Mm -hmm. And from that, we could identify that above, uh, below 12 degrees Celsius, not so many uh, bees were flying. And when it was raining, it was also not so good. Um, so we can see the number of days that were suitable for pollination during flowering. Mm. And we see now that um, <clears throat> of the first days of flowering, especially of pears, many days are not suitable for flying by, uh, by bees. Right. So that influences the pollination uh, success, so to say. Yeah. Um, it's, a very, it's a very delicate cycle, isn't it? It's quite a tap dance between the pollinators and the flowers, isn't it? And in, in addition to that, we also looked at several hundreds of species of flowering date, and we can, we can identify the percentage of uh, competition, more or less, between species, between flowers, for the pollinators that are present. Ah, and you see, interesting. Yeah. And you see, especially when the pears are flowering, they are uh, flowering earlier than the apples, that the competition increases rapidly during this simple start of the flowering. And it varies very much from year to year uh, because of all kinds of uh, climatic conditions. So that is a very interesting topic that we are now exploring, so to say, to, uh, to get an idea of uh, how that change over time. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so, Doctor, what we're looking at is the full cycle of interdependence and interrelatedness. How humans impact the plants, how humans impact the pollinators, how pollinators impact the plants, and now, through your studies, how the plants actually impact the pollinators too. It's, it's a fascinating cycle. And uh, what's the website they can visit, doctor, so they can learn more about your work? Um, unfortunately, most of these websites are in Dutch. Um, so that will be difficult. <laughs> well, they, they, end, they all end with, uh, what is it, N NH? No, what is it, NL? N NL. It's, NL, uh, yeah. it's natuurkalender.nl. But um, for learning more about the phenological projects, um, I would uh, advise, especially people in the United States, to go to the National Phenology Network uh, uh, website. That's right. an excellent. You know, what, you know what? The best news about that is we're partnered. The YourGardenShow.com Citizen Science is partnered with the American National Phenology Network, and who knows, Doctor? Maybe Sim will be partnered with the one in Netherlands too. What do you think? <laughs> we have been closely involved in uh, in setting up the uh, National Phenology Network. I was there at Tucson uh, to to discuss that. And it's an exciting project too, and um, a lot of uh, value can be uh, gained from that. So um, I, I really can advise people to, uh, to participate in these networks and also in your Garden Show uh, citizen science projects. Thank you. Well, we appreciate your innovation and your inspiration, and we look forward to uh, hearing more about you, Doctor. Thanks for joining us on BFI Great. 2011. Tell everybody we said hello. Have a nice meeting. Bye-bye, everybody. And, and a special thanks to our, our, our team member in Amsterdam, Claire. She did a great job in helping arrange this connection. So thank you, Claire. And we'll thank be you. right back. Uh, for, we're going to come back here to San Jose, California, and uh, to New York City for Part 7 of Beathon 2011. We'll see you back in a minute.